Sergio. All right, we're we are recording. Sergio, calm down, sweetie. All right. Welcome everyone. I'm going to call to order the October 12th meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee at 9.03 a.m. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Mm -hmm. Members of the public are able to access the meeting in real time via Zoom or by telephone. So I'm going to go through, uh, I'm going to pause and um, give my dog something so that he'll mm -hmm. stop barking. One second, please. If I start barking, can I go home? <laughs> nice, tr nice, nice try. try. <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts. Okay, so <laughs> let's do a sound check. Um, all right, we'll start with Anika. Yeah. Good okay. morning. Good morning. Uh, Jennifer. Here. Hi. Hi. Mm -hmm. And Pat? Here. All right. And we have two Athenas. So you have to, oh, you can you say hello on both or just, just the one? I'm just going to use one one voice so right. we don't get confused. All right. <laughs> nice. Um, okay. So as I said, Mandy will not be here today. And I have to leave the meeting at 1030 for an appointment um, in Northampton. So I have a sense that we'll be able to get through what we have on the agenda before them. But if not, Anika, if I could pass it over to you at that time, it would be great. I think we're going to be fine okay. getting through everything. Um, I can you, but okay, perfect. If you need me, I'm here. I got it. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Um, so I'll just quickly review what we're going to, uh, what we're going to work on today. Um, first, we have some minutes to approve. Um, we are going to review that water bylaw and so great that we have Anika. I think Anika is the only one on TSO here, right? Yeah. Okay. So that, that will be great. And then we have, um, the, let me just. I just want to look at my, uh, we had, we did receive this morning two sample matrix from Anna. So we'll have those to look at and to begin that it will, it will really be a second discussion of the matrix. And when we get to that, I'll, we can talk a little bit about process with that. Um, Mandy had asked that the calf not be reviewed today because she really wanted to be there for that. Um, so we, we won't be doing that, but we will review section two, eight, and nine on the town council policy on making recommendations for town council appointments. Um, so I think I'm going to put the dog outside, and, <laughs> um, hang on. And then, uh, we is, I will go ahead and pull up the water. I'll pull up all the documents. Yeah. One thing, uh, sure. I, I'm having a hard time. We get a lot of things late. Mm -hmm. and, and so having the matrix just coming in this morning, you know, and I haven't seen it, and I know I haven't been here, but uh, it, I, 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 I would like us to get, to encourage people to turn in things so that we actually even have, yesterday would have been all right. Um, yeah. You know, uh, so I think it happens a lot in this committee, and I'd like us to figure out a way to not have that happen so much. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, and, you know, I think, I mean, I, so you weren't here last week or last time. Is that right, Pat? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was in Florida. Just to give you a little a context, um, Anna came last meeting. Oh yeah, I read the minutes and stuff. You read that, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, and then she was hoping to be able to get us some samples um, and just time, I think probably got the best of, of, of her with that. Um, so we could we could hold off on it or we could just sort of look at it together here and see if there's you know, yeah, and that's that's fine for now. But there, there's a consistent pattern, and and over in this committee, and I'm not sure why. And it's not anyone's fault 
Right, but right. People send us things late, and I think we need to be a little bit. Um, I don't like looking at things for the first time. I like to do my homework. Totally understand. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll try to be. I'll you know, I try yeah, not. That's fine. You know, I <laughs> try to remind people, but also recognize that, you know, um, Jennifer. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, so for, I don't know, for whatever it's for me, I find it because maybe it's set on my phone. I'll often like this morning, I went to the public file, you know, just online to see if anything was there and it was only the agenda. So are things, I'm just wondering if they're getting posted. Yes, yeah. I'll, I'll post them today. Oh, okay. Thank you. But so there, you, the SharePoint has everything in there, which you, you know, you have access to the SharePoint. Right, right. right. I did go to the SharePoint, but I guess I mean, this morning I just like clicked on first thing because I wanted, I did want to see the matrix. Yeah. So whatever, I went to the public file and it was still just it wasn't, the, the agenda was the only item there. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Athena doesn't even have the matrix yet. I got the matrix oh. five minutes ago. So yeah, see, that's not okay. I, I all right. Shut up, Pat. Sorry. Well, you know, I guess, and one of the things I brought up last time is when Anna had agreed to put some sample matrixes to us, I had sort of cautioned that, you know, we all have a lot on our plate and is that sort of the right process I think um but uh you know it is what it is so we'll try to do better I guess is what all we can we can do um you know I really had very little all right hang on guys <laughs> hang on let me just do that <laughs> yeah and I'm not blaming anybody I'm just you know I really I just get I don't like not having time with the material I right just, and it is a ripple because it's not like we're putting the material together we're sometimes waiting to get it outside right right yeah so no shame or blame attached to my comment at all for any one individual or group but so i will be quiet now yeah Thanks. but you know this is actually a question for me as the chair i would like your feedback on so i waited to put the packet items into SharePoint and I was waiting for Anna to send me some matrix stuff so I could do everything at one time. Um, I didn't have to do that. I could have put the, by the, you know, the, basically I could have caught everything would have been a copy from last meeting into this meetings folder, which I have tried to be in the practice of doing, um, as opposed to saying, just look at the other folder. I think you copy it from the last folder. Yeah this folder right um so if that would be more helpful um like the by water bylaw was reviewed in tso on thursday um so that and like the old materials from last week could have been put in and then if we got the matrix we got the matrix so there's two things we're talking about one the items that we have and getting those into the folder. And two, if we're accepting items from outside places, right. do we wanna have a deadline and say, if we don't have it by 24 hours before the meeting, then we're not gonna take that item up, even if it's on the agenda that was produced a week ago. Is that what I'm, is that, am I hearing that? Does that seem like we could have consensus on that? Well, is anybody else irritated by this or is it just me? <laughs> if it's just me, I'll deal with it. <laughs> uh, I agree that it's helpful. I'm sorry, Jennifer, go ahead. I didn't, no, no, I didn't. no, go ahead. Go ahead. I agree that it's helpful if documents are in ahead of time, but maybe if we do have um, maybe some flexibility, Michelle, at your discretion, that if something is coming in and it is within that 24 hours and you feel, okay, this is something that, you know, I, I could add now, and there's at least a possibility that we can go over it, um, then we have that flexibility as well, because, you know, sometimes if things are out of people's control and right. uh, that we might, you know, we, we could be um, cutting ourselves, um, cutting ourselves off from something important if we have such a, a strict deadline. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can totally see it both ways. Jen Jennifer, were you going to? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with um, what you both said. 
Right? Some of it has to do with the size of the document. I mean, if we get a big document, you know, like the night before, there's just even, you know, no way we're probably going to be able to read it. Yeah. You know, yeah. versus like maybe a one sheet. It's still nice to have the time to consider something, but um, I've even seen it for town council. Sometimes something will get in at the last minute. It's 15 pages and there's just no way. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, and I, I'm going to maybe just, I don't know who the right person is to talk to about this, but like for the water by law, I knew to go to the TSO packet, right? Because I knew it was on the agenda. But then when I got to the packet, I couldn't actually find the bylaw because it was embedded in a memo that Paul had written. It was like in the bottom of the memo. Mm -hmm. um, there and I don't know, Anika, if there, it sounds like from what Athena's response is, there isn't a separate document with the bylaw. It's just part of that memo. Right. But this could also be my fault because I know um, mm -hmm. I, I probably should have sent you a message right after. And I think I did the, the um, for the previous meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but I, so that, that is probably my fault because I probably should have sent you a message right, you know, after the meeting on Thursday, mm -hmm. um, for you to look out for it. Yeah, maybe, but I, I, I did that the week before. So this way, at least you'd be alert. Yeah. You'd be alert to it. So I don't know if I have my weeks mixed up. Um, and I, I know I sent you a, mes a message about it, but it could have been from the, the, the previous meeting. So if I did not send you um, an, an alert last after last Thursday, my apologies, because that would have alerted you to know that, you know, it was ready or coming. Or actually, I should have sent you a message with the, um, with the bala. Yeah, thank you. I, I, well, so I think with the regulations, definitely we communicated about that. I think it was the bylaw that, um, yeah. I, and like Anna had last time talked that the bylaw was going to be changed in TSO, but then it sounded like I looked at the minutes or something and it was maybe not the minutes. I looked somewhere that said it was approved as is, it sounded like in, so, but I don't know if that's the practice. Like does one chair after every time you take up business, are you supposed to let the next person who's taking it up know that it's done? Like I'm not. To my sure. understanding, yes. Like if okay. it's something that is coming from TSO and is coming to to GOL, that I should be um, giving you the heads up, sending you the documents so you know, um, so you're prepared to add it to the next packet. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, I guess because we're kind of like the last stop on the train. It. Yeah. <laughs> I never it to... her, but that's that is my understanding. <laughs> Okay, sort of like, yes, Athena, please. <laughs> I, I, I agree. This is like a, a chair to chair communication kind of thing. If there's, if there's a part of this that I can help with, but I try to send minutes at least immediately after the meeting so that you all can communicate with one another about what's ready for the next committee. And especially when things are moving from one committee to another, it's helpful to have some you know mo mode of you know here's what we've here's exactly what we voted here are the regulations exactly as we voted them and I agree that the bylaw the water bylaw was a little confusing because it was embedded in that memo um, but if if I can help with that communication at all please let me know. Well, I may say Athena you do more than enough. Yeah. Thank you so much. You <laughs> have advised on that. And, you know, I, I dropped that ball. And I think that that is, it's completely reasonable for chairs to be able to follow up with the next step, at least in my opinion. Um, I do not feel like we should put anything else on Athena's plate that we do not have to. <laughs> and Athena really, and also she takes everything that comes from this committee to Lynn for the agenda setting, because it's sort of, this is the last stop for most measures. So it's ready for council after it comes out of this meeting. So we've sort of been like, haven't had that. I haven't as the chair had to necessarily worry about that as much. I, Lynn will know, but it's usually because Athena has, you know, let her know. <laughs> So anyway, yes, Athena's ground zero for the council. Like I was, I had a question yesterday and I was thinking, do I call this, this, this? I was just like, Athena. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wouldn't know what was going on without Athena. I'm so grateful. 
Mm. Oh, silly. Really. <laughs> all right. All right. That's enough of that. Uh, take it, kid. Take yeah, it. It's right. <laughs> and here I'm looking at both Athena's, like trying oh, to right. get. You can't at all. Take both. There it is, a visual <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> Well, I will endeavor as the chair to do better to get things if I, whatever I do have in as soon as possible, at least into SharePoint. Um, I, I think that Athena probably prefers to wait until everything's in there to put it into the public, but at least we'll know what we what's in SharePoint. We'll try to get everything in there as quickly as possible. Yeah, and I, I just want to say one more time, this is not about shame or blame. And I think you've been doing a great job of chairing this committee. So uh, thanks. All right, so uh, let's go and let's take a look at that water bylaw. So I'm going to pull it up here. Just give me a quick moment. We without Mandy, you know, it takes a little bit longer. Yes. <laughs> um. All right. Going on. Where is Mandy? <laughs> You know, at the TSO last week, all of the things today. No, at TSO last week, I was just there for something else, but I said I was just in awe of how fast the bylaw had gone through. And I think Anna thought I was just talking about your meeting last last week, but I mean, the whole process, we were getting emails on the council about issues with this. And then the next thing we know, we have a bylaw. It's, hmm, I've never yeah. seen anything move this fast. It's great. Let it be an inspiration. <laughs> Athena, would you be able to um, uh, allow me to share screen? Please. There we go. Should be but, You know, Anna and uh, both Anna and Amy had, they really dedicated so many hours of work into this. Um, behind Absolutely. So I had mentioned the issue when we, you know, we were getting those emails initially it had come up in the district and it was in a newsletter. And then when I tell people now we're at this point, they're just like, oh my God, we had an issue and it's just, it's kind of solved <laughs> in a year. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. All right. I'm trying to zoom this a bit. Um, while I'm doing that, Anika, would you just tell us, so... Um, we finished the regulation. So would you give us an update on TSO and, and their review of this? Yes. So um, again, because of the, um, the, you know, all the back end, all of really the, the painstaking research that had gone on um, by both Anna and Amy at certain, but, you know, really taking in just about every concern um, that had come from committee members and comment, uh, by the time we got to last week, it was, um, everyone was, had, had been, you know, informed and even in ways that there may have been, um, even in ways that people had been confused, um, it, you know, it was cleared up. And I think also just really um, in, impressed, <laughs> impressed that it, it came to this point. Uh, so quickly. So there was, um, so it was a unanimous yes. And uh, we had actually, uh, this had come up before Universal Refuse. So in comparison, this really just in, in every way, just, you know, <laughs> there it just flowed on by. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I read a couple reports about the meeting and it sounds like that's very true. Yeah. Um, in terms of the comparison to universal uh, refuse, is mm -hmm. that what it's called? Refuse? Yeah. 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 Universal refuse. So yes. And that was also, you know, a beginning of a, you know, what'll be an ongoing discussion. So good. There, you know. All right. Um, so and did, do you know, was this or did it, did it have to be or was it reviewed at all by like the town's lawyer or anything like that? I see like a lot of references in here, but or was it just researched by Amy and, and Anna? Uh, you know, Guilford had been involved and please excuse me, Athena may be able to speak to this. Um, of some sure. of the bulk of this had gone on um, while I was away um, or out of commission, but I 
I do believe that they sought out multiple um, opinions and um, right. from necessary sources, but I cannot recall. I don't want to speak. Um, okay. Uh, whether it went through the, the town lawyer. Athena, do you know if there were any other, um, in terms of just actionability, is there, was there anything else with respect to that for this bylaw? I haven't heard that it was reviewed by um, the town attorney. Um, okay. I think the only thing that's squirrely about this is that the we would want the bylaw and the regulations to sort of take effect at the same time. And the bylaw doesn't go into effect until 14 days after. So I think that's just about crafting the motion um, at council to make sure that everything is is uh, happening at the same time. Okay, perfect. All right. So then let's just, can everyone see this a little bit better? Or should I do? I can't see it at all. Oh, you, you don't see the screen at all? Or it's just nope, not? I, nope. nope. Hmm. It's just a black box for me too. Oh. That's very strange. Okay, let me see. Is that for you too, Jennifer? Just a black box for you? Yes. And Anika? Yes, I see uh, that it says you are viewing Michelle Miller's screen, but I am not. Okay, how about now? No. Hmm. I just downloaded it to try if that would... Um, hmm. Let me try something else. Anything now? No, maybe, Athena, oh, can you share? Yeah, and I can also stop and try again, like stop the share. So now you don't you're back it's back to normal right mm -hmm. all right let me try one more time here and then we'll see anything now uh i think it said you were starting to share your screen there was a flash of white but it's black again interesting it says participants can see your screen so i don't know why it's not working i can see that there we go there we go <laughs> all now, right is that athena or michelle that's athena how are you in uh Okay, got it. <clears throat> Thanks, Athena. Um, okay, so I think this the is the wrong document. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, oh, here it is. There it is. Yeah, it's at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. All right. Um, so let's start from the top here um, and we'll just go through. I don't have a lot of experience. We haven't reviewed a ton of, uh, you know, these uh, bylaws like this, but Pat, you probably from last year have some experience doing this. Do you have any recommendations about how to go through it? Uh, if people probably just read through. I mean, if people have already made notes or something like that, we could go that way. Um, okay. I'm going to read through it again and we can start, maybe just start with A and. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Consistent. <laughs> Sounds like one more. I'm sorry. No, I was going to ask. So the criminal enforcement piece, um, Anika, is that um, so these fines are going to be set as a separate matter. Is that right? From as part of the regulations or um, yeah. Athena, do you know if like the fines are going to be a separate piece of this or it just hasn't been determined or? Um, as far as I know, the, the fines, um, are included in the regulations. And I think some of the intent with the regulations was so that we didn't have to update the bylaw every time we wanted to change the fines. Right. And then there was some delegation of authority in the regulations. So um, we'll, wow. that will need to be changed. Okay.
Okay. Okay. Anybody have any comments on on A? I don't. All right, then let's move to B. Um, are we, have we, we, are we using Oxford commas? I mean, are we, do we want to get picky here or because I think after managerial, there would be a comma, right? Yes. Uh, it does, yeah. I usually sit, put that in like that. Yeah. And I think that we've used it up above. I, I'm going to, Athena, I'm going to take notes, I guess, because we don't have a word version of this. I'm not sure who's ho holding the, the word document, but uh, I'll take notes and then I guess send them to you and yeah, to you, I guess. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do um, the... All right. <clears throat> And then C. Okay. I'm just recalling and feeling like I need to bring up so I, I maybe I'm confusing another matter, but wasn't there some oh no, that's probably the the um residential bylaw, but so that we did not decide to pass off the amendment of the regulations to some. So the town council is always the body that will amend the regulations. Does anyone recall anything related to that? Can you repeat that, Michelle? Yeah. Um, it, it, when we went through the regulations, it was agreed that the town council will always be the body that will amend the regulations. Um, maybe I'm confusing this with something else where we said the town council would create the regulations, but then another body... Um then them well in this case we are the water commissioners so we would pay right. that okay that must well, have been. Uh, i may be thinking about um with the board of license commissioners yes. you know, with the fees for the rental permits yeah that's different that's different and also i think the fee we didn't we recommend the fees oh i don't know okay all right, <laughs> going on. So, all right, D. Michelle, if I can offer a suggestion, I'm yeah. not sure that we're clear on the violations and the enforcement and the non-criminal disposition. I think that they're included in the regulations. So this will need to be reworded and if the committee's not ready to reword that section comfortably and recommend it to the town council then i i think we might need i'm i don't think i can advise you on on how this part should be written in order to coincide properly with the regulations so i think we might need some advice on that if members aren't ready to fill in these blanks yeah. and i also had a bit of, of confusion and i could be um, confusing this with something else that this that the the fees um, that there may have been discussion that they that they have to be reviewed in some sense um, annually. Um, so what what that is is updated. Um, so I okay I, the Athena there. 
Do we want to pull up the regulations and just take a look and see if we can figure something out? Or do we, who would be the right person to talk to about this, Athena? I opened the regulations and I was, because I thought there was, a, there is a fee schedule. Um, and I, my memory, Anika, is the same as yours, that there was discussion about um, the fee schedule, including the, um, the water and sewer rates in here. But I thought there was also fines. There are fines. Um, but I'm not sure about the enforcing the enforcement person, if it's the water department or if we want to say DPW or if we or if we have to name a person. I'm not sure about those. No, no, I okay. I'm so um I'm sorry, I think. There is fees for there's uh, fines for violations of the water use restriction and violation of water regulations. Um, I'm trying to find if there's any. And this bylaw is specific to violations of water regulations. Right. So like the water use fees are probably separate, I would imagine from this, but. Oh, the, the appendix does list the fines are for violation of water regulations right. is one. And then vi violation of water use restriction is the other. I don't think there's an enforcing authority. Okay. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I can't advise better on this. No, that's okay. I did okay. Uh, reach out to Anna as well, so I figured she would have the short answer. Um, she really does know this, like the back of her hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You just reached out to her. Oh, okay, perfect. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Let's then we can maybe wait to see if she gets back to you. That's great. Um, because this is saying enforcement pursuant to MGL. So that's a whole nother which MGL is it, you know, um pursuant right. to and um there are restrictions about how high a fine we can we can charge according to MGL. So I think that's the section i think there should be the section that says we can't we can't levy a fine that's higher than a certain dollar amount but then in the restrictions it's that dollar amount per day and that's how we get above you know that's how we charge more for a fine if it's continuing for days and days and is there any you said that you saw athena criminal enforcement in the regulations was there a, an, an amount or is that still yet to be like yet to be determined based on what we're discussing. It, it is water fines at the end of the regulations and there's violation of water use restriction and violation of water regulation. It, I don't think it says criminal. Okay. No, there's, there's no criminal enforcement in the regulation. So this is, again, I'm not yeah. sure about these questions. So I think we need some if Anna knows, that would be great. Okay. All right. Well, let's. I have, I have a word. Oh, please. Great. <laughs> word. Um, so the fees will be set annually as they are now. Um, this is why they are a separate um, appendix and not part of the reg. So she's also asking if it would be helpful for her to, to jump on. Yes. <laughs> and while she's doing that, there's one small correction in E for both water and sewer. Sewer. Uh, I'm from Jersey. It's hard to say that word. <laughs> so can we do that um, at the same time? Yeah. As it's it the, at the same time as general notice. It should be as a general notice. Very much at the same time yeah. as a general note, and it's in both the sewer one. Got it. Well. Okay. That's the only grammatical thing I saw. Okay. I'm coming Wait. to explain her baby now. So. This um, hearing notice on the town website 
is it what's that called a semicolon provided however where are you where so are you? in e yeah the town council shall similarly notify business owners and residential customers by posting a copy of the public hearing notice on the town website I, i'm just not sure of the use of that punctuation yeah uh, right how are that nothing here yeah. Why is there a, a, a punk, like a, why is that there? I'm just, does anyone know? just be cop, like provided that the, like get rid of however as well? By posting it. No, that. I just want to let you know honest here. Okay. Yeah. Let's go with the. Yeah. Hi, Anna. <laughs> I just saw you because of the way my screen, is. can you okay. hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Okay. Hi. All right. So we are just um, going through this bylaw and realizing that this top piece about criminal enforcement, enforcement pursuant to MGL and non-criminal disposition, we're not very clear on how that um, gets into harmony with the regulations. So we were hoping you could help us with that. Okay. Hang on. Let me get up to speed here. Sure. Um, so your, your question is, can you repeat your question? The question is the criminal enforcement, the enforcement pursuant to MGL, blah, blah, and the non-criminal disposition, um, are there already, where are those fines being established? Have they been established? Are they, or is this just like sample? Um, yeah, I believe those are established by the state law. I don't know what they are off the top of my head. Um, but I'm, I'm fairly certain those aren't something we set. Those are something that I think it's like the $300, um, fine. Okay. Do we know which MGL that we're referencing here so that maybe we can look at it? Yeah. I think it's the ones that she references <laughs> in bullet point a, okay. um, chapter 40. I can look those up, uh, if you would like me to really quickly, um, I think that that MGL is the maximum fine that we can set, but there's also a missing penalty here and enforcement by, and then the regulations don't refer to criminal enforcement or not criminal disposition, but they do talk about fines. So I think we need to make things sort of congruent with one another. And I'm, um, I'm not sure, I'm hoping Anna that you have some insight into how to do that. Um, okay. So I think that the, uh, um, the enforcement we set in the regulations, is that right? Or no, sorry. The enforcement we set with the, um, town manager, hang on, I'm reading through. My brain is having trouble switching gears from what I was just working on. I'm sorry. Yeah, understandable. Um, <laughs> Athena, if I'm remembering correctly, we had put in the regulations that enforcement was through DPW and the town manager. Are you remembering the same thing? I, I just looked at the draft of the regulations that I have and it doesn't say the word enforcement in them. Cool, great. That's, that's why, that's why I, I'm having so many questions. I'm having a hard time right. answering these questions because, um, because it's not exactly written out in the regulations. And then I'm not sure if this if this section would just indicate that these fines and penalties are per regulations or how we, how we wanna re reference what's in the regulations here in the bylaw. Um, So when we look at the regs, I'm trying to find the section that talks about the, um, let me see if I can find the page. Sorry, I'll. Start the end. All right, so in resolution, in the resolution process, um, we talk about how violation of these regulations will be determined by the water 
by the DPW. Um, and they assess appropriate action, including if a fee or fine is, in, is involved in accordance with these regulations. So we don't say the word enforcement, but that is the section where we talk about um, where we talk about what enforcement would mean. Um, and it's when, fo when folks are found to be in violation of the regulations. And they, there's an appeals process and, and things like that. So um, that it's on page six, starts on page six. Of the, re of the regulations? Of the full regulations, yeah. Okay. So I think what Athena was recommending or suggesting could be possible is to to say to have some language that says the violations are um, pursuant to the regulations. Is that what you were saying, Athena? I'm really not sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> it sounds like we need to maybe get more information on this before we can, Anna, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, I just wanna make sure I'm understanding this. So you're talking about this first part up top where it's, we wanna fill in those X's, right? Yeah. So, okay, so what we need to do is, or, or and I can do this, but what, what needs to happen is um, we, need to we need to write in what the fine is per violation. That should be set on MGL. I believe it's 300, but I'll confirm that, or that 300 is the max. Um, and then enforcement pursuant to, I'll read through these sections to confirm what the amount is, but based on the regulations, enforcement is by the Amherst Water Department. Um, that's what, I mean, that's how we wrote it in, is that they are the ones who determine and issue the fine. So is there, did you intend for there to be criminal enforcement on this? Um, no. I okay. do not believe so. Um, okay. Although I guess Athena, when do you use non-criminal versus criminal? Like, is this is that dictated by the way the regulation is, or is that just what we want to do? I um, I'm trying to look at something right now. I'm sorry. I'm trying to look at three different things. Sorry. I yeah. I'm wondering I don't have I don't have good answers to these questions, and that's why I suggested before when we started looking at these, and I realized that there's still these missing sections that we might need we might need some um, advice about how to make sure that all these references are correct. Okay, so let me make a note of what needs to happen then, and I'm sorry I I don't know why we left those blank. Um, Sorry. Well, so, we were just saying how wonderful, wonderfully quickly this whole thing has moved through <laughs> and really giving you a lot. Well, it got of, to GOL. Don't give me, uh, don't give me any. No, she was saying how much, you know, you have put into this and it's all very true. So if we have to slow down for a moment, I think that's okay. It will all. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, I remember this being explained clearly. Um, but yeah. So yeah. I'm going to email Amy and Paul and I'm going to ask, um, one, does it have to be criminal enforcement? Right. And by the way, if it's criminal enforcement, I mean, only the police really can enforce. It. So in terms of an enforcement party if there is a criminal enforcement it's the a it's the police department um i i don't see why they're the criminal enforcement throws me off i yeah i the only reason i think that it might be the only rationale i could give to it being criminal enforcement is if it's for some reason required by state law that it be right like that's the only way that i can understand that being a criminal enforcement um and so that's why i want to go through and look at those references okay Anna needs to go through and revisit references. And Anna, while you're writing that, the first question I asked when we pulled this up is whether this had been reviewed by KP Law. Um, and I'm wondering if given all of this like state law stuff that's in here, if you have any feeling about that. Or to my know. knowledge, it has not been reviewed by KP Law. Um, I would be comfortable with a KP Law review. And this also came from Paul. Um, and so I'm not as 
my my discomfort isn't as high. Um, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Um, maybe that's a question though that we should also be asking is should this be reviewed? Um, just because I've now with a couple of other things, um, including the street signs and um, for houses and buildings, and then I just got a legal review back for discharging of firearms. And it made me aware that like some of our bylaws aren't even in line with the state law. And that's really concerning. Um, so in my mind, so I just want to make sure that this is um, going to be in line with state law. Mm -hmm. Michelle, if I may, it, it yeah. seems like the, the appropriate thing in the this enforcement section is to refer back to the regulations because it doesn't make sense if there's a fine in the regulations. It doesn't make sense that we would have to amend the bylaw and the regulations, especially considering that amendments of the regulations require many of the same things that the reg, that the bylaw would require for us to the steps that it would take to to change them. And I think the intent of having regulations separate from the bylaw was that we didn't have to go through those same steps twice. Yeah. Um, Correct. But but I, again, I think that it would be helpful to to know from somebody who knows absolutely for sure that we can put in according to regulations in this enforcement section rather than. Um, spell those things out. Yeah, because the regulations do um, do reference specific fines and MGL sections that um, correspond. So a lot of these, a lot of the fines specifically for like tampering with a water meter are set by the state. Um, and so the the regs themselves reference those. And so I can um, I can do some of the cross checking, but I think like Athena said, it, it's trying to just reference the state law so that we don't have to. Um, we aren't actually really setting them. They're just, it's just referencing what the state says. Mm -hmm. I do. Well, there's, some that, oh. there's some that are set by state law, but then the regulations also have fines. Right. So there's, there would be some reference to M MGL of a, you know, it, to me, it seems appropriate that there would be a reference to MGL about what fines are levied by the state, but then there are also penalties in the regulations too. So it seems like we, we would need both references. Yeah, um, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, I'm also wondering if bylaws require a certain form that like has to include non-criminal and criminal if, it, if there is criminal right. on the bylaw itself. So somebody so, doesn't have to go fishing, you know. Yeah, but. the fines, um, Athena, the, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. The fines are established in Appendix A which I think Anika mentioned to y'all is the, the how we're kind of trying to do this so that we don't have to rewrite everything is that Appendix A is what's revisited. So the water fines and the violation of water use restrictions um, are, are 50 for the first offense, 100 for the subsequent, but that's in, that's what, as far as I know, that's the only thing that's established by the regulations and not by MGL because everything else right below that, um, I'm on page 26, the last page of the regs, um, everything else says as prescribed by mass general law. So I think that that's my understanding is those are the two that we set as a town um, and everything else is set by the state. Yeah. And it would be interesting to know when, when um, you know, we are clear, it could, they could just be clearly defined um, with like a criminal enforcement regarding um, an entity that would be seen in violation of public health safety, mm -hmm. environment and general welfare as included in, uh, in A. Mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was actually just reading an article I have to think about where, um, and you know, it definitely wasn't here, it wasn't even in Massachusetts, but it was in, in regards to uh, a very large apartment complex and uh, management and, and owners, like there were just all kinds of problems with pipes and therefore pollutants and whichever. So, um, and there had been um, multiple fines and warnings and, and documents. So mm. uh, I know that, that that was criminal. So it could, hopefully they're just clearly defined. Yeah. All right. So, 
Go so, ahead. Uh, no, I was just going to say, Anna, it sounds like you're going to write to Paul and to Guilford um, and ask these questions. Are you clear on what questions you're asking? I want to read them out loud one more time. Please, please so, do. <laughs> um, question one is, does it have to be criminal enforcement and why? Uh, question two is, if so, can DPW enforce that? Wouldn't it have to be APD? Um, question three is, Anna needs to guess another question, but I need to revisit the references just to confirm. Question four, should we get a legal review? Is this aligned with state law? Question five is, what are the fines set at? The enforcement say the max. Are we going under that or are we saying that it is the max set by state law? So basically we're filling in the X's and the titles but we want, we're doing that based on state law because our regulations have the local fines and those should be in the appendix, not in the bylaw. So that we don't have to revisit the bylaw every time we wanna change the fines. Yeah. Okay, great. Jennifer? Yeah, I just have a question. So since there still are X's, wouldn't it come to us after those are, comp I mean, come to GOL after? Because we couldn't really, finalize this until that's, is that correct? I mean, I think that if you're looking for clarity, consistency, and actionability, you could confirm my work by saying, you know, by kind of, by duplicating it and saying, this is what Anna said, the state law says we're confirming that and that's fine. Um, but as long as I think we are clear on what the numbers are pulled from, I don't necessarily, I mean, it's up to you all, but I also don't think it needs to come back to you as much as it just stays with you right now. Like you don't vote on it yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, this is my just for, because I'm always trying to be clear on what the route is. And I guess I asked that. So can it go to council with the X's or it can't until those are? I, I think mean, they need to be filled in. I mean, we need to know what we're presenting. And then the council wouldn't, has to vote on this, right? Yes. Yeah. And everything would have to be filled in at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I it think makes sense for it to come from you all filled in. And and I'm sorry that it, it wasn't. I don't know. I don't know what my brain was thinking. No, no, no. That's okay. I was just wondering, you know, what, or it could be filled in and not have to come back to GOL could go, but you're saying it's just staying here. We're not voting now. Or, that's up to you. We haven't all. decided yet. Yeah. I think that's up to you all. And I'm sorry, I just referenced two readings. This does not need two readings. Is that correct? Because it's not a zoning bylaw. It only needs one reading. Uh, that's not correct. We, we need two readings for regular bylaws. For they, need bylaws. To be post, they need to be posted on the bulletin board and so forth. Um, if, if I may, Anna, can you add to your questions? Do we need to reference the enforcement in this section or can it just say, um, finds like reference the regulations you know regulation uh fines set by regulations um in accordance with mgl such and such that's what it says in other bylaws rather than saying criminal enforcement enforcement pursuant to and non-criminal disposition and so forth that just says fines fines set by regulations in accordance with mgl Yep, I will ask that question. Athena, my my question response would be if, and I need to, I'm pulling up the regs now to search, but if the um, regs don't specify, we would need to make sure the regs specify the appropriate sections of MGL. Um, right, that's right. And so um, it looks like they all, that they are all referenced here. Yeah, 165 section 11. That seems to be the, the one that's referenced most, 165 section 11 is intentional injury or interface with a water meter. Um, and so I wanna so my, just- So my question is, my question is the, the MGO reference, is that the reference that sets the maximum fine that we can charge per day? Or do we need to include references to each MGL that sets a fine for a water violation? I think we need to include reference for each MGL that sets a fine for water violation because they seem to be specific to the type of violation. Like the one that I pulled up now is just for tampering with a meter. Um, MGL section 40, chapter 39 is pollution of water. Um, so they seem to be different and they're different fine amounts. 
Right. So if the bylaw refers to specific MGL and fine amounts, then if the MGL changes, then we have to update the regulations and the bylaw, which is why, you know, what that's what I thought the intent of having the regulation, all of the fines include the, the and be included in the regulation. So we don't have to update them in both places. So my question mm -hmm. is, can we just refer to the regulations in the bylaw rather than having everything duplicated? My, I, I think, yes, my worry is, does that mean we need to go all the way back through the regulations process? So could I just jump in? I, I'm actually looking at this memo that Paul wrote, um, which is the process for adoption of proposed water use regulations. Um, and I'm just wondering if this might give us some insight into, because like in that first under, yeah. for, under recommendation, it says, He's recommending adopting a general bylaw um, that permits the council to adopt water regulations and then beginning the process to amend the council rules of procedure to allow the con a council to adopt regulations with fines without needing to include them in bylaws. To adopt regulations with fines without needing to include them in bylaws. Does that... No, Michelle, I think, sorry, I think you're reading that. That was one of the options. That wasn't what he was recommending. I think he was recommending. No, can we, oh, oh, oh. yeah. Sorry. Are you able to scroll up on that a little bit, um, Athena? Because I'm looking at it on my computer. Okay, so under recommendation, the two-pronged approach. Oh, I see, I see. I thought you were talking about something else, sorry. So what does that mean? Begin the process to amend the council rules of procedure to allow council to adopt regulations with fines without needing to include them in bylaws. So right now, so Athena, you had said that you didn't think the fines needed to be in the bylaw, but Paul is saying that we need to update our rules of procedure in order to do that. He seems to believe that we have to have fines in the bylaw. Is that, am I understanding the situation correctly? That's how I was reading it too, but I, I also am about to pull up the rules of procedure. Rules. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sure you already on it. But. I'm, I'm not sure that there are references to needing extra steps. There's, there's the word fines isn't in any council action that provides for the imposition of a fine or penalty shall be in the form of a proposed bylaw or regulation. So I'm not sure. So it seems. It seems that we've already done that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I feel like there are too many questions outstanding. Okay. That, that we're not sure about to move forward right now, but that's just my suggestion. Okay, I agree. Um, and I think we can, I, I, I am wondering though, if this second, prong of the approach that Paul's recommending is some another question that we need to ask. I mean, this was done in February of 2022. So actually, are you saying, Athena, that perhaps since February, that rule was changed? I do remember, I think, something along that line now that when we did the rules review, is, is, is that what you're thinking? That that was already done? I'm not sure if that changed since February. I'd have to go through the drafts of the rules and what we changed when to know for sure. But the, the rules as they are now um, allow the council to impose a fine in the form of a bylaw or regulation, not only a bylaw. Perfect. So I think in my, in my reading of that in the rules, I don't think we need to change the rules to allow the council to set fines according to regulations. Okay. All right, Anna, will you, do you feel, would it be helpful if you copy me on your email just to keep me in the loop about what's going on or at least, yeah, that would be great. And, and maybe Athena too. Um, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so are we ready then to- Let's So back to the semicolon? <laughs> yes, I would like to go back to that semicolon and actually ask Anna about it while she's here too, um, if that's sure. okay. Um, in E, Anna, down uh, the... It's correct. The semicolon is correct? Yes, it's a conjunctive adverb. It's bringing two complete thoughts together. And uh, some of the conjunctive adverbs are things like, however, therefore, consequently. 
Okay. Exactly what I was going to say, conjunctive adverb. <laughs> um, but do we need the provided? Okay. So provided, however. Yes, because um, it makes more sense with them. <laughs> yeah, it does make yeah. more sense provided, however. I just, yeah, I don't know. Something seems so off to me about that, but I think if that. Uh, it would just be weird. Yeah. Trust me. I do. I do. <laughs> um, Watch Mandy will come in and go, no, but no, it's fine. It's good. Well, Mandy's away. The commas shall play. <laughs> All right. So um, any other comments or questions on this? <laughs> All right, Michelle, I'll CC you on this. I'm going to try to get a call with Paul this week just to confirm this will be continued at the 26th meeting, which I can be at. Okay. Yes. Um, I was the, yes, we'll make sure it's on the 26th. Is, yep. that, is that okay? Yeah. We just, we have a lot on the 26th because it's our first goals, town manager goals meeting. And then we have other, other things, but we'll, yeah, it's fine. Hopefully. I mean, it seems like there shouldn't be any big shot. There shouldn't, let me, let me phrase this. There shouldn't be anything that majorly shifts the, um, it just answers these questions, right? There shouldn't be any changes to the uh, to the three things that y'all are looking for: um, clarity, actionability, et cetera. And so, hopefully, it'll go fast. Um, we can just although if, if a legal review is needed, it may go less fast, right? <laughs> so we'll just wait and watch on that one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. I, for some, I had in my mind that that one was going to be like a really quick and, um, you Thanks know, it. <laughs> it was a good experience though. It's really good to, yeah. It's okay. Be, I'm sure it's still going to move faster than a lot of other and everything else. Yeah. Even if it does have a legal review. So, right. Mm. Yeah. Well, no, that can slow it down enormously. KP law is difficult. Just a lot of, yeah, it takes a while on those. Yeah. Um, all right. So let me just pull up um, the agenda here. Um, so Anna sent us um, two examples of matrix that we can look at that I can pull up here if my screen sharing will work, but I can also forward to Athena if it's not going to work. Um, let me just, Athena, I'm just going to go ahead and forward this to you. Is that okay? Let's see. Um, it's not in SharePoint, is it? No, I just got it this morning. So I was going to forward, I'm going to forward it as an email to you right now. Okay. Is that right? Okay. Yep. And then I will add, I will definitely add it to SharePoint. All right. So, and with this share, there's um, a matrix and Anna says, uh, one she quickly put together based on the question CRC put together for ZBA. And then the other is an example of a hiring matrix, which is much more numbers based. Um, I think the sample matrix is the Excel document that Athena will share. And then there's a link to the uh, hiring matrix. Oh, no, the link is embedded in the email to the hiring matrix. So I think we can start with Athena, have you shared yet? I'm going to try to share one more time just so we don't have to bother you with this. Let me just see if I, I can. I don't, I haven't received it yet. So I'm just waiting for that email. Oh, okay. All right. Let me, while that's going through, see if we can get this to share one more time. Do you see my screen right now? I'm just seeing a black screen again. Jeez. So you wanted me to share the sample matrix. Is that correct? Yeah. Let's start with that one. Yeah. Okay. I just let me. One second. Anna, are you hanging out for this discussion? I was just checking my calendar. I think I can if you need me to. It's totally up to you if you if you want to maybe even just to describe, explain this, and then if you need to sure. jump off. 
Sure. So um, basically what I, what I looked at, um, what I was going to share was something that I had used for work. And then I realized that I probably shouldn't share it without the permission of the person who wrote it. Um, and so I, um, I, I tried to adapt it slightly, but basically the way that this worked is that the, the person who was do, that the person doing the hiring took elements of the job description um, or what we were looking for and put them across the top and then put a scale of zero through three um, and share. Can make it bigger? Can't see it. So, um, so I looked at the, I looked briefly at the questions at CRC. I didn't get all of them in here, but I hope to just give you kind of an example. Again, this is an example. This is highly modifiable. I just wanted to show you what something might look like. Um, and basically, you know, the, looking at the criteria, you ask about experience in planning, urban development, community engagement, other committee work, uh, that relevant experience bucket. And then each person would have their own copy of this. It's not a shared document. Um, and they would say, <laughs> they would kind of fill in sort of that where they felt the person was from zero to three saying, you know, this person hasn't engaged at all in town. They have no relevant work experience, no relevant personal experience. Um, and so I'm, I'm rating them as a zero or, you know, they have some transferable skills that I think might be relevant. So I'm going to put my comments in the, in the two box and kind of note why I'm putting them there. Um, and it gives that sort of, again, like I mentioned last time, that framing of, uh, you, you're not saying there are three, right? You're explaining why you feel they have all of the, all of the elements that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, and so this is, you know, please, please don't read into my really quick drafty, uh, way of establishing the questions on here that again, like that's, I was, I, I did this really fast. And so that's, this is not a commentary on CRC's questions at all. Um, but you know, understanding <laughs> the role of ZBA, when they answer that question, do you feel that they are demonstrating that they can explain the differences between their, what they would do on ZBA versus what they would do on planning board? Um, and do you feel that that is a really high grasp of it? Or do you feel like there's a lot of room for growth there and they would need support? So, um, again, what this does is it's not necessarily giving you a right or wrong answer. It's giving you a way to frame the conversation. Um, and, and come from the same place. So we had talked about this a lot last time and I wanna reiterate, this is not going to be a perfect process in a, um, in a process that's political by nature. And so what this does is I think it gives us a common ground and at least allows us kind of to just own where we are being political and, and that's okay, right? That's, it's our job to be political, but um, it at least gets us the things that are common ground we can find common ground on using a matrix. So hopefully it starts the conversation. Um, and yeah, and then the, you know, just to kind of, again, remind our, ourselves of the equity lens in this process, what this also does is it allow, it encourages you to consider indirect experience as relevant. Um, and it encourages you to consider that as part of the process. It also ensures that we are all looking at the questions using that same sort of has direct relevant and life experience or, you know, demonstrates total, total understanding, or, you know, gives you those, those same sort of ways of considering, um, someone. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Anna and Athena. Could you just scroll back to see, I just want to see what's on the other side of this. Okay, great. So this, go ahead. Sorry. I see that Jennifer's hand was raised. Jennifer. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, also, I, mean, I know we haven't decided we're gonna use this, it's, you know, we haven't made any decisions, but we're also gonna have to look at the questions we ask and see if, right, right cause I think like experience collaborating in different, different groups across difference is great. I don't know that our questions always get to that. Oh, that was questions. pulled. I think that was pulled from your questions. I, I believe so. It was something, there was a question about, can you tell us about experiences you've had collaborative collaborating or something like that but um agree different yeah like I don't know that like some of the that are the questions like we've asked in CRC yeah would get just to be clear on it yeah would get to would allow us to really be able to so then okay so there's a difference between the questions you ask and your evaluation criteria Right. And so I think that that's something to consider too is 
I pulled these from the questions without necessarily feeling fully like I had a grasp on what the criteria would be, but that would be a question that um, whether it's CRC or GOL, depending on what you're interviewing for, um, would be would be part of this. And hopefully that's a good starting point for generating questions too, just as a good practice right. interviewing as well is sort of what are we looking for and then what questions get there. And the what are we looking for would be what goes in the matrix. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna not beat around the bush. So what, so I just, I think a challenge we have is mm -hmm. we're not, we're looking for representation from the community in many different, you know, according to many different criteria, including your positions on the issues. <laughs> And the concerns you represent, or the concerns that are important to you know, so that we don't have like a planning board that's kind of all of one tends to view development in one way, and then the other half of the community that's a different just isn't represented there. And how does that fit into how we evaluate? So we're not saying I disagree with this person, therefore I don't want them. Although that can't help but play into it. And if you have two candidates, one's your position, one isn't, two candidates for one spot, you know, you would, might vote for the person that shares your opinion. But if there's one, if there's, if there's a lot, if there's a lot of vacancies, <laughs> I guess that's just, that's my concern. I mean, how does the matrix help you get to a diversity of points of view on a governing body? Sure. So, um, I'm going to, this is off the top of my head, but my thought would be that if you have one of these columns um, saying, you know, what, what elements does this person bring to the table that would diversify our current ZBA, um, that you could be as specific as where they live, the identities they hold, things like that. You also could, and I, I think that it might be relevant to have this be a separate column possibly. Um, because I think that those are two, those are two different things. Um, but I think you could say, you know, does this person bring a viewpoint that, uh, see what's hard, Jennifer, is, is how do you, how do you establish what the current viewpoint of a board is, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you're doing a litmus test and asking everyone right. on the board what they currently think, it's really hard to know what you're benchmarking against. So, so, you know, I think that there's a challenge there in terms of what you're looking for and um, at what point does objectivity matter or not matter. Right, um, okay, so we've had a situation where you could question objectivity. I mean, to be- We always have that though. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying, but how do you, right, right. So, but, but the matrix, I guess I got that the matrix was, that's what's hard. Isn't the matrix trying to address that situation? That's what I'm saying. So it, just, in, Anna, would you pause just for a second? We're people, I so we're always going to be grade. looking at this. So that's... Anika? Okay, so I just wanted to say like another point. I think, you know, people can, you know, zero in on these type of matrices. And yes, you have to be careful, but I think that they, you know, on a positive note, they can kind of lead us away from, and Jennifer, I get what you're saying. You're saying, you know, one half of the community and the other half. But you know, this leads me back to kind of this overall exception in, in Amherst that you have like A and B and that's it. And you know, I know that you know, when you take the part of the community that might that pays attention to uh, local government and the issues and comes to our meetings, that's the case. But we're also missing out on a huge uh, number of people that aren't A and B thinkers, you know, they, they might be middle ground and pushing, you know, some way. And I think this kind of A and B mentality or perceived mentality does turn a lot of people off um, from wanting to be involved uh, with our committee. So um, I think just anything that opens the door for variety, for true diversity, you know, um, because I think that we have many committees that, you know, when you really look at what is true diversity, you have diversity within diversity. I mean, we're lacking. So, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm supportive of anything that can help us, you know, open the doors 
um, in that regard to encourage more people to be involved. So we're not constantly like figuring out, um, do we have a balance of the A and B one side or the other on the committee and have more of a true representation of um, our community as it actually stands outside of, of the people though I appreciate them all very much that come and attend um, meetings and really follow uh, local. Government. No, I agree, but we were trying to, I guess, sort of have it that we, we make it a little more objective and not who we personally like. And I'm just, you know, want to make sure this helps get, get us to that. So, mm -hmm. so I think my response then Jennifer would be that, I don't know that we should be asking the question of, do they have views that I want to see? Right. So if we're looking to make this more objective and we're looking at boards like planning board and ZBA that are that are following written regulations, then, you know, what questions we ask should be, are they able to follow those regulations and, and promulgate those regulations? So I think that this does go back. Oh, I agree with that. But what when that doesn't happen? So so but this is where that matrix can help. Right. So that when we're looking at this, if you if you're looking at these the sample questions that I threw out there, it wasn't, you know, do I like what this person says? Um, it isn't, does this person believe in X, Y, Z that I also believe in? And this is where I get to that point of this helps us get closer, but we are a political body and um, ultimately that political lens might come in. I think what's also interesting is to look at which, which appointments the council retained and which the town manager does. And when the town manager does appointments, you know, that it is, um, I would love to see him using a matrix as well, however, it's a much more objective process, um, I think, because he is not a political entity. And so it's interesting to me to consider when and how that political lens can come in. And I think that my personal opinion is that we have foregone all of these other really, maybe not fully, but we have foregone many of the very important elements of appointments in favor of that political stance. And so bringing back something that grounds us in objectivity like a matrix, will will help because you also can't throw away all of the other things that are on this matrix if you do have that political discussion that's one element of all of these things that all really matter so well, i agree with that that's what i would like to get to yeah pat yeah i, I i'm i'm struggling and um, not just now but but over many meetings from uh, you said when that doesn't happen meaning when 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 uh, it's not looked at objectively is that because if i say that when the person i wanted didn't get it or i'm not heard because i didn't get what i want and i i really think um a matrix can help us look at a range of things and believe it or not because i'm sure you probably don't about me but what I'm always looking for is somebody who can collaborate across differences. And I, that is critically important to me. But, but somehow or other as a community and as individual members of the council, we've got to stop deciding that we didn't get heard or because uh, we don't get exactly what we want. And I, I think it's, it's, a, uh, it's a disease that infiltrates this community. And uh, you know, finding a way to insulate or uh, wear a mask against that would be very helpful. A vaccine would be even better. <laughs> so I just have trouble with that statement. It's a pr privilege to kind of to, to feel that way, you know? Yeah. Uh, I agree, definitely. Yeah, I just want to say, so on, this, on the CRC, I voted for two people that I, two candidates that I actually don't agree with. I'm very much, but they were totally qualified and, you know, there were more, so uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm not looking to get, um, you know, I don't, it's not that I don't feel hurt if I don't get what I want. I just think that, yes, yeah, sometimes we need to support people because they meet all these kind of criteria, even if we don't share their point of view. That's what I'm saying. I, and I totally agree. I would also just add and argue a little bit um, that I don't think that as a community, we are hearing each other. Well, yeah. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, but there are degrees. Me, that's the disease. Uh, if we were listening and hearing each other more, I think that we would have a lot more abundance to work with than what we have mm. right now, which feels very limited. Anika. Yeah, I just want to say my, you know, um, I, I'm not sure if they receive that way. My comments were not to you, you, Jennifer, or anyone here, just in general um, about the community and something that, you know, what I hear all the time. And I think that, you know, we, um, you know, th there's a large, um, there's a large population that is, you know, actually, you know, viewing, um, you know, our discussions and in, in ours, meaning, you know, local government and town council as very, you know, kind of A and B. And that is in fact a turnoff for a lot of people um, because it's seen as, you know, diversity is at one side or the other and a lot of assumption about you. So, you know, my point was just that, you know, we, you know, it is pretty, you know, fancy, kind of fancy and privileged to think that, you know, you can set up a committee just based on, you know, kind of choose, uh, very distinct and distinct and passionate point of views and see who gets the most votes, you know, um, you know, as opposed to having, you know, folks that are coming from, you know, very different places with just different perspectives and overall views and ways of, you know, you need to have some bridges in between, um, I think, you know, the, the committees as well. And I think that we are lacking in a major way in that department. Okay, so I'm just going to pause us because I have to leave at 1030 today. And so just want to check in with the committee here. Um, I do want to get the minutes that we have approved. Um, if we can go ahead and, and do that quickly. Anna, if you please feel free to, to jump. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Appreciate you. Bye. Thank you a lot. All right. So we are, um, we have the September 28th meeting minutes to adopt. Um, has everyone had a chance to look at those? Okay. So I'm going to move to adopt the September 28th, 2022 meeting minutes. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Anika seconds and uh, any further discussion? All right. I'll start with you, Pat. Aye. I'm an aye. Anika? Aye. Jennifer? Hi. Okay, great. Um, so I wanted to quickly review what I have down for our next meeting and see if there are any 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 input about that at this point. Um, and it was a bit of a challenge because Mandy really, um, particularly the CAF and the regulations that Mandy had proposed looking at, she wasn't able to be here to do that. She did for sure say she wanted the calf to be when she was here. And I think would like the other piece that's on the agenda today to also be part of that discussion. So um, what I had on my agenda here for our next meeting was it was going to be our first discussion of the town manager goals. That was something that we talked about several weeks ago. Um, I think Lynn might even be joining us for that. I have to check in with her. Um, and then, as I said earlier, I received a pretty lengthy review back from KP Law on the firearms bylaw that we talked about several weeks ago. So I received that yesterday. Wasn't in time to get it onto the agenda for today, obviously, but it will be on the agenda next week. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and say right now, I'm today going to set up the packet and SharePoint for our next meeting and whatever I have right now and anything that needs to be duplicated from uh, today's meeting, I'll just dump in there now. Um, and so at least we'll be able to look at it internally sooner. Thank um, you. Of course, yeah, and including that firearms um, piece, which I think was, it was really interesting. Um, and then I also have that we would do a mock trial of the matrix. I don't know if this group feels we're ready for that. Maybe that would be the easiest way to sort of jump in and decide on questions and stuff. Anna agreed to be the model for that. So Pat, last week you weren't here. We talked about doing um, like a mock 
trial of the matrix with a person so that we could actually go through and as if we were interviewing them and each use the matrix um, and then be able to have a discussion based on that um, to sort of pull out where there were issues, where things worked, where they didn't. Um, and then the CAF and the, um, the rules that are on today's agenda. So that's a pretty big agenda for next week. And of course the water bylaw, if we get that back as well. I do believe the CAF and the, the, the um, rules are not urgent. So I'll talk with Mandy about that. Um, Je Jennifer. Yeah, you, I know you don't have time now, but um, you're the liaison to the Board of Health, right? Um, and did they have KP Law come to discuss firearms? Not yet. Um, their last meeting, which I attended, they started the conversation. Um, and I actually brought to the attention of both Paul and Lynn that they were also having a conversation. Um, and so that maybe we want to see right, how- Right, we could do a joint. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that thank you for reminding me because they have a meeting actually tomorrow. So I think it would be good for them with Paul's permission um, to share that KP law thing with them um, as well. So I'll talk, I'll ask Paul about that. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, so do we feel good ending the meeting now? Is that okay? And then we'll take everything. Okay. All can right. We, can we do a I'm We're, sorry. Um, can, can we do a quick, there's no public attending, public. so we don't yeah. have public comment. Thank you. <laughs> just was going to do that. Yes, absolutely. So just looking at attendees, um, we do not have anyone in the attendees. Um, so public comment has been called and there is nobody here. Um, and if there aren't any other questions or comments or concerns, then I will adjourn the meeting at 1029. No complaints. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Thank, thank bye. you. Thank okay. you. Bye bye. So, Athena, are you and I staying on? Oh, that's right. Yes. Um, <laughs> let me give me just a second here to stop recording.